This is Mr. Lacey Varanus Varius, a lace monitor, and I am standing in the Lilydale High School reptile room. Does your high school have something as cool as this? Probably not. Find out more in today's episode. You're watching Reptile Mountain TV's Australian Adventure Series, where an American reptile breeder goes down under. Welcome to Reptile Mountain TV. I'm TC Houston, a former professional AZA zookeeper and small batch skink breeder. And today I am standing in front of Lilydale High School. Lilydale High School is just east of Melbourne in Victoria, Australia. And what's significant about Lilydale? They have a reptile program. Now this program is well known throughout Australia and parts of the world and I want to share with you some of the amazing animals that they have and talk a little bit about the program that they have here at Lilydale High School. Y'all real quick check out my sponsor Healthy Herp Instant Meals. Guys this stuff is amazing. I give it to my Berber skink, Gigi skink, Blue Tongue skink and Tortoise diets now. This company is a commercial AZA member and a great source of nutritional food for your reptile. Check out the link in the description. In my high school we had woodshop, pottery, and photography but at Lilydale they have the zoological center and reptile house. Now students begin their journey in year seven where they're given an opportunity to gain hands-on husbandry experience in reptile care taught by senior students. By year 12 and graduation many of these students have gained enough skills and experience to be partially certified towards a zookeeping certificate. Now of course many students arrive uncertain or a little fearful of reptiles but by the end of the program, they're typically passionate or at least respectful of their cold-blooded counterparts. Let's check out some of these ambassadors today. Oh, buddy. Yeah. Hello, oh, you're soon fine cone. Hi. Look at these. These are shingleback lizards or bobtail lizards or stumpy lizards or pinecone lizards or sleepy lizards. These are I love you lizards is really what these are if you're a skinkaholic like me. This is the shingleback Taliqua rugosa. These are spectacular animals. Now you'll notice that they have a stumpy tail, hence the, one of their names. Now that tail is used to be a defense because it looks like the head. And so they're technically like a butt face lizard really. Um, you can't really tell which is which if you're a dumb predator. And so people will attack that little fat pudgy tail, people, the predator would attack that fat pudgy tail and allow these little guys to get away. Now they do not drop their tail from my understanding. These don't have the brake lines in their body or in their tail like our other skinkoides do. So it's not a natural thing for them. So if they were to lose a tail, it would be much like losing a limb. It will not grab back. It will probably seal over um, if they're lucky. And these guys are, um, are in the Taliqua genus. This is Taliqua rugosa, as I mentioned. And so you can see that blue tongue. Oh yeah, but it is a dark blue, very dark blue. And in the United States, these guys are exceptionally rare, exceptionally rare. Unfortunately, because they don't breed in large numbers and because it's sometimes difficult to get them to breed because they do breed in almost monogamous pairs and they have small litters of one to four maybe, usually, uh, usually around one or two, and the babies are quite large. In fact, a baby is gonna be about half this size right here. So this is about twice a baby size and this is a nice, solid bloke, a big old, um, big old, big old boy I assume uh, and they have that great great triangular head like in our other Taliqua and these guys can be found all across the kind of the southern portion of of Australia out into the western Australia in the southern part where it turns into a subspecies the gold fields which has some bright oranges in them and this is I believe this is Rugosa Rugosa and this is the kind of the most common bobtail that you're gonna find or shingleback skink or bobtailed lizard. Sleepy lizard, they call them that because, well, they do a lot of sleeping. And in captivity, the shingleback eats much uh, greater number of vegetation, much number greater, that's not good English. But 
they eat a lot more vegetation in their diet than the other skinkoides and the other taliqua that have a lot more protein. These guys are gonna munch a lot on your veggies, aren't ya? Yeah, taliqua rugosa. Right here is Varanus Varius, the lace monitor. And what's this guy's name? Mr. Lacey. Mr. Lacey. Mr. Lacey is amazing. Holy cow. How old is Mr. Lacey? Seven. Seven years old. Oh yeah. And it feels good. <laughs> so as you can see, he has these claws. Look at that on my thumb or in my neck. Yeah! All right, bud, where are we going? Are we going up or down? Are we going down? Oh yeah, that feels good. So right now I have a full tree for a lace monitor, but there was this head. Yep. I'm good for a minute. All right, there we go. So as you can see, I gotta speak up. I'm the tree, or like a more like a tree stump because I'm round and chubby, but that's okay. Look at this beautiful, beautiful lace monitor. Yeah, he's how old again? Seven. Seven years old. And they can live quite a long time. And this guy uses these claws to hold on to trees, to run fast. Uh, it helps him gauge his environment. And right now his tree is me. And let me see if I, there's his head. Come here, bear. Let's get you back up around. This way. There we go, come on. Oh yeah. And oh yeah, I just Frenched him. He just, he just tasted, oh! That's my nipple. All right, so, oh yeah. How close do you get to a lace monitor? Oh, hugging wise. Now, here at uh, Louisdale High School, he's been here his whole life maybe? Yeah. Yeah, since he's a baby. So he has been, Tamed. You would not find a lace monitor to do this in the wild because uh, the other side, well this right here, would whip you first. It would, um, they can actually curl it up like a whip. Let's see. You want to whip? Can you show them? There you go, gentle. Okay. So they would whip this and it can actually get quite fast and would hurt significantly. And that would be their first line of defense is to say, well, one would be to avoid us. Then the next thing they would do is they would curl up this tail and they would say, hey, leave me alone. And then they would thwap, thwap, that's a good word. They would whip it out and whack you pretty good. And then what they would do is they would use these other things that are inside that mouth there and he would chomp down. And that would be a pretty serious bite because they have very sharp curved teeth that are sizable for gaining uh, control of their prey. And so a bite from a lacy would not be a very pleasant event. Uh, in the wild, just leave them be, let them do their thing. But this beautiful creature here has been tamed and they just wanna go out and do their thing. They're not interested in harming people. They're great for, uh, they'll eat snakes and rodents. So if you don't like snakes, they're gonna eat snakes for you. And snakes also eat rodents, so you're gonna, these two reptiles are gonna take care of the rodent problem, and most people don't want a lot of rodents in and around their home. So, and this beautiful one will also probably eat some eggs and some birds, and actually anything that can go down that gullet, he's gonna try, I bet you. If it's living and smaller than him, he's gonna try and eat it. Here, he gets a nice diet, probably rats. He gets rats and eggs. Look at this beautiful, absolutely amazing lace monitor. Varanus Varius, guys. This this is Taliqua oxyceptalis, the western blue tongue lizard or blue tongue skink. Isn't this just gorgeous? Now this is quite a dark variant. There are some that quite ha that have really broad white and black bands. 
but I love the coloration on these animals. They have that great eye band. Now these guys are found throughout the western side of Australia and they can actually be found all the way uh, into parts of Victoria, uh, Northern Territory, and uh, I believe a portion of New South Wales even has a population of these gorgeous little lizards. These are a drier or arid species. They do quite well where it is hot and dry. And you can tell they have a lot more um, sheen to their scales, which helps with the, the hydration, keeping and retaining that moisture. And these guys are a thinner, sleeker little lizard, so they can get up under rocks and into burrows. You notice that they're not quite as big, barrelly round as maybe our Taliquaskinkoides are. And these guys have that great, they do a really fast flicking of the tongue when they're nervous. This guy seems to be pretty chill because he's captive, and so they don't flick as quickly. But um, I absolutely love Taliqua oxyceptalis. The banding on these guys are amazing. We do have these available in the, available, they're decently available in the United States for a high price because they are few and far between as far as breeding but hopefully the individuals that do have them will be breeding them and have some success. We have a very small population, so we will have to be very diligent with breeding them uh, mindfully so that we don't have any inbreeding depression and losing of genetic diversity. But here at Lilydale High School, they have a pair of amazing Western blue tongue lizards. This is an absolutely spectacular animal. Look at this guy. It's okay, buddy. Now, they're a tree-dwelling species. There you go, bud. You just get comfortable being a tree. I am a tree. I am a rock. I am a... No, uh, we won't sing. I'm sorry. We should probably cut that out. Look at this beautiful animal. Now, these guys, they are insectivores, I believe, and they're going to feed mostly on the insects in the... Uh, in the forest, off the trees, and in the leaves. They spend most of their day just perched on the side of a branch. And what's cool about them is they are um, not necessarily thermal regulators as far as uh, they don't necessarily move back and forth across thermal zones. They actually just adapt their bodies to the temperature in the in the environment. So. If it gets warm, they get warm. If it gets cool, they get cool. They don't do a lot of thermal regulation and shifting back and forth as a animal would for like our skinks and so on and so forth. And look at the helmet on this guy with these absolutely spectacular dinosaur-like spikes and that big boofy head, that gorgeous eye, that big round pupil and that big old eye helps him to spot his prey and these claws on his little hands, these long fingers are helping him to wrap around the branches and get a hold of me and the tree and the hay baby. It's okay. Shh, shh, shh. There you go. Up, up, up. See, so you, when you're holding an arboreal animal, you notice how I go higher, he calms down because most attacks in the wild for predation come from above. So a bird's gonna come down, a, even a, a mammal that might be a carnivorous, carnivorous animal is gonna swoop down on the animal so when they are above you they feel like they have the upper hand and so that helps them to calm down so if you ever are working with an arboreal animal bring them up higher and it will help them to calm down as opposed to low, uh, looming over them because then they kind of feel insecure um, so guys the Boyd's forest dragon Darwin and you go to like a public park, these guys could be perched just like that right on side of a tree. Isn't this just spectacular? Beautiful frill neck lizard. Frilly lizard. Oh, I love them. They call them frillies. And sometimes they get a little bit feisty in the wild because they are trying to defend themselves. And it's all pure defense. And they poof this out to say, hey, look how big I am. Look how mean I am. 
Now they don't spit venom like the Dilophosaurus in Jurassic Park. If that was the case, uh, that'd be cool, but uh, they're cool enough as it is. Look at this. Annery, albino, and snow. So guys, the little guy on the top here, this little dude, he is an albino. And then this next one is a snow, and the next one is an annery. So these guys, anneries, visual, plus this little albino makes this little snow. So the anetheristic, it pulls out the euthrin or the red colored pigmentation in the animal. You can see the black eyes on these little guys. They look almost like you've put them on black and white mode. And then what you have here is your albino, which takes out your melanin, which is the black pigmentation in a lizard. And then, or in all animals actually. And then this right here is a double visual representation. So this cute little guy with a pink tongue, no pigment in his eyes, and almost no pigmentation whatsoever is called a snow. Isn't this gorgeous? Here at Lilydale High School's Reptile Room and Reptile Center, they have bred a snow now. How about that? So I'm here with the man who started it all, Marcus Whitby. Now, Marcus, you started from what was just a couple snakes, is that right? Yeah, it's a, a carpet python and a blue tongue. Carpet python and a blue tongue has become an entire zoological center, is that right? That's correct, yeah. And so now you got a, you just got a grant to expand, right? Yeah, we got a uh, government grant that's uh, gonna see a zoology center built at the school. So it's gonna be able to house uh, over 300 animals and about 60 odd different species. So yeah, it's a, a real, uh, real boost to the, to the program. No kidding. no kidding. And so, now I heard you're getting crocodilians, is that correct? That's correct. We've got a couple of crocodiles waiting in the wings. Uh, so they're at a student's house at the moment. And we're designing the, uh, the crocodile enclosure uh, currently. So, uh, in a few years time, hopefully you'll be able to come back and, uh, and check out the crocs. Yeah. Absolutely. So, could you imagine having a high school where you can study animal science and get hands-on with a crocodile. I mean, come on, that's the greatest thing ever. And so, Marcus, you have started this, and now you were just mentioning you want to maybe move in the direction of some like wildlife conservation actions with turtles. Yeah, exactly. We've got a big problem uh, in Australia, or in Victoria in particular, with uh, foxes raiding turtle nests. So uh, we're, we're pretty keen to try and uh, alleviate that a little bit and, and one way they talked about doing that is possibly having a head start program where we can uh, hatch out the, the, the juveniles and then uh, give them a bit of a head start and uh, get them uh, going well and then releasing them into the wild so uh, yeah we can uh, boost their numbers a little bit in the future and then getting the kids involved in that uh, giving them a great awareness of, of their need as well so yeah that's huge yeah, yeah. that's huge well, I gotta thank you, Marcus, for opening your doors to let us see this amazing facility. Thank you for what you're doing. Oh, it's unbelievable. And I hope that other biology and zoology teachers in the U.S., yeah, Absolutely. take note, guys. This is uh, what you want to do. Yeah, pleasure. It was great having you here. Appreciate it. Brilliant. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed touring this amazing facility. And get ready. I cannot wait, cannot wait to see what's in store for Lilydale High School's reptile program as they're going to expand with that $5.4 million grant. They're gonna have freshwater crocodiles and an entire new facility. Cannot wait. We've gotta come back and see that when it's done. If you are a biology teacher anywhere in the world, I challenge you, make this happen at your school. Thanks for watching. I'm TC Houston and remember, opinion is not fact.